Japanese tradition, culture overseas. Generally, every week, we provide public lectures on traditional culture, like traditional Chinese medicine, Tai Chi, Chinese art, and language. You're welcome to join us and welcome to invite more friends to join us as well. My name is Shimei Liu Schumacher. I'm moderate for today's lecture. I'm based in Nuremberg, Germany, and I'm a student of Master Foyer and Master Terry of British Deyin Taiji Chuan Institute. As you know, Master Foyer is the daughter of the famous Chinese Taiji Master Li Deyin. Her mission is to promote the Chinese martial art of Taiji Chuan. She was the first Chinese to bring Chinese Taiji Chuan on Qigong to the presidency of Ireland, the World Economic Forum, Young Leaders Conference, and the home of English Football Championship. And she's the founder of British Chinese Art and Culture Center, the founder of British Taiji Academy, the vice president of the International Fitness of Qigong Federation, and the president of British Fitness and Qigong Association. Today, Master Feiye will introduce us the step 18 to 20 of the 24 steps Tai Chi Chuan. Because of another obligation, she can't give the lecture today live. We will use the recording she did for this lesson. Now, I could like to share her recording with you. Thank you to the host, Shimei, for that wonderful introduction. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my seventh public lecture on the 24-step Tai Chi Chuan. Since we started this series, I received many kind words and comments, feedback. Thank you so much. I am so glad that you have found these public lectures useful, helpful, and to help your Tai Chi journey. Today, we will begin, we will carry on to the next three movements. I will cover three movements, namely, after Golden Rooster, standing on one leg, Yu Nu Chuan Su, Fair Ladies Walks on the Shuttles. The second movement I will cover today is called Hai Di Chen, Needles at Sea Bottom. And the third, last but not least, movement for today is Shan Tong Bei, Shan Tong Bei. Flash through the back, sometimes also translated as the fan through the back. Before we start um, each movement, I, let me just share a little story from last weekend, my workshop in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Last weekend, I was invited to teach a workshop in Belfast, Northern Ireland, to a group of yoga practitioners and yoga instructors. And this group uh, have never done Tai Chi and Qigong. So Qigong and Tai Chi are new concept or new practice for them. By the end of the weekend, two days after 10 hours, um, they all had a wonderful time, and, but many find it, the feedbacks were, it's fascinating and it's challenging. It's very interesting for me to hear the yoga practitioners' feedback. They find it fascinating yet challenging. Why? Is it because the movement of tai Qigong is too difficult? I don't think so. Compare to some of the yoga movements, Qigong movements are not 
as stretching or challenging physically. Many of uh, yoga practitioners are super flexible and they're very good um, getting you know, the posture, the shape of the movement. So what do they find challenging? One participant uh, said it very, very clearly, which I think is unique, I want to share. She said she finds the hardest thing is to make sure the mind stay with her movement. She finds when she is following these simple movements, her mind is shifted away. She finds it. She, her mind is all over the place, in fact. She said, I, my mind is just, oh, you know, thinking of all sorts of the thoughts, just left, right and center. They all come into her mind. And that she finds is very challenging. And I think this is so common and it's so, um, you know, it's the, it's what I hear perhaps for many Tai Chi Qigong instructors that are students as well. So how we can engage, we can keep our mind engaged with our movements has become more the key, the key to your good practice or deepen our practice. The shape of the movements to many, I think are truly not too difficult. However, is the mind is more challenging. We have a phrase called, you know, from Chinese, both Chinese and English, call our mind, monkey mind, monkey mind. Xin yuan yi ma. Okay, so very similar is to describe and recognize our mind is the hardest to master to keep control the movement of the body in comparison some techniques are harder some are easier but in by and large it can be mastered easier the hardest task here is to master the mind and the more things the knowledge or the rules that we are taught the busier our mind can be. When you are thinking about the process of getting it right, sometimes it can produce tensions when you concentrate too hard. If you think about when you're learning to drive, when you sit behind the wheels for the first time and that car is moving, do you remember that kind of attention that we, we were and just worried if you know we missed something? Have I forgotten to look at the mirror or have I looked at the wing mirror or have I checked the seatbelt and um, have I checked the gearbox? So all of these things and tasks that go through my, our mind, so our mind is racing and eyes open like staring to the front oh have i seen this and the whole body becomes quite tense so learning sometimes is not the first job in tai chi and qigong is to learn how to enter a frame of mind that is calm quiet tranquil and learn to switch off from all sorts, leaving all sorts. What happened yesterday? What about to happen tomorrow? Leave all these sorts at the door. And in your mind, you want to create a space and time and just for yourself, just for your connections of your mind, listening space to the body listening space for your breathing to feel each and every breath each and every transitional movement 
from one movement to the next. Okay, and not just as a stilled picture. Picture one, the starting point, and picture two, or the final picture, and nothing in between. And quite often, our mind or brain only have what looks the beginning, what looks the end, and in the middle, it's absent. Okay, so this is why. Quite often, at the beginning of our my class, I always said, try to forget or try to empty your mind. Don't think about all these, you know, even philosophies and principles can sometimes become overwhelming in trying to get to perfection or worry about. You missed out something, and those can produce a little bit tension. So, without further ado, my invitation again is to allow yourself to enter this frame of mind, paying attention to your intention. The intention is to stay with your. Flow of the movement, and to stay with the smoothness of your breathing. Okay, wonderful. If it doesn't happen today, as long as you keep trying, and your brain can be slowly trained to enter and stay with this frame of mind. Okay, are you ready? I'm going to demonstrate and show you the three movements first of all, and in its entirety, and then we will go through each movement at a time. I hope you are ready now, and let's begin. Appropriate warm-up is always recommended for the limited time when we do these. Live streaming, I rely on your wonderful self to complete your warm up exercise. Even Tai Chi is a safe, gentle form of exercise. The right warm up loosen up your joints in the body and to stretch, giving your body a little bit stretch and open up all the. Joints are still very important. Okay, now I'm ready to demonstrate, and you may watch. Those who knows the form can also follow. Find yourself a safe space. Last time we finish the movement from Golden Rooster standing. On one leg, 经济独立。玉女穿梭 ，begin Okay. Now you have seen the three movements. 
the flow is so important. So we don't want to stop and start. The energy keeps moving. We will get to the flow a little later when we have learned the three movements. We have um, analyzed or shared with you the how to look at the footwork, how to look at your handwork, and how to put them together. So these are the technical um, you know, features and requirements. Of course, beyond the physical shape, as I said, the most important quality comes from the unity and the harmony between our minds. And always throughout the process is the mind say with that feeling of internal, the changes of the body and the technical features are the media to anchor, to anchor our mind. Otherwise, it's like a kite, you know, a kite flying up. And they have to be connected by a string, right? So this string of anchoring the mind, monkey mind, we have a wonderful name, both in English and in Chinese. The mind is like monkey, very active to bring it down. The reason we talk about the changes of the hand and footwork for the time being, for a, quite a lengthy time, is about engaging the mind. Okay, now when you're ready, let's begin with the first movement. Yu Nu Chuan Su, Fair Ladies, works on shuttles. I'm going to demonstrate this posture facing the camera. The map, if we map out the changes of this posture, is diagonal, 45 degrees, diagonal left and right. So I'm not doing the mirrored image. I'm just going through, this is my left, is the first direction, and then to my right is the second direction, okay? So the footwork will go like a zigzag, zigzag direction. So let me just show you again from the front. Yu Nu Chuan Su. Stepping out, 45 degrees. Hold the ball, bring the back foot up. Step out to the other corner and gently lift the bottom hand. And finally, shift your weight, lock and push. Okay, this is the first one. We will do two of the same movement. This is the first one. We'll end up to the right corner. Right hand blocking, left hand pushing. To break this movement down a little bit more, I will sh show you and or take you through the footwork or some of the features, how you could do this footwork with smooth flow. No hands, if you like to just follow me with the footwork. I go back a little bit so I have enough space. So in your own time, so try to shift your weight in preparation, okay, in preparation. Shift your weight over to your right leg. This is not the mirrored image. I, this is my right leg and you do the same. And draw, lift your left foot up. Good. And soften the supporting foot. Sit, sink and step to the left corner. Gradually shift your weight forward. Try to make this process like pouring sand, 
from the back foot to the front foot and gradually shift your weight forward, forward, forward. And when you have transfer forward enough, so bring the back foot up, peeling up from the heel to the toes of the floor. Balance on one foot and the back foot rest to the inner corner of your ankle. Then step out to the right corner. Again, notice it's very light and controlled. Then we shift weight forward slowly until your body weight distribute more or less 60% in the front leg, 40% to the back foot. So pouring the body weight forward, forward, forward. Good. If you bring the back foot up, there should be a hip space or round about two fist or the width of your own foot. There should be some space. If you draw the extension of your front foot and back foot. Okay, let's try to do this movement again. Try to think first and reaching out. When you do the step ever so light, you take your foot up with control and you land with control, okay? And then transfer weight, seat, keep seated. As if you're sitting on the bar stool with the roller, with with the coast and sliding your tailbone forward. Okay, let's try this again. When you're ready, you can stand on one leg when you're ready. So this is the including the transitional footwork from the previous move. Soften the supporting foot. Soft and sit down. And now to the corner, look step. Land with the heel, sitting onto your bar stool and roll the tailbone forward. That's it, nice and smooth. And bring the back foot up. As you keep transfer, transfer, bring the back foot up. And then open the hip, step to the other corner. Sit down, sit down again. Transfer weight. Pouring sand from one cup to another and feel that smooth roller coaster um, chair on the coast. Transfer weight forward. And sliding back to the next corner. Transfer weight forward. Control, open hip and step, sit down, return to the previous corner. Transfer weight and close the hip. Now we return to the first corner, ready for the second. You need transfer, up, this, is our footwork. As you can see, go zig zag 45 degree. What happens with the arms, with the hands? Well, you step corner, making a corner step, our hands will change from kiao jia. When we balance on one leg, this hand shape is what like a lift or little gentle flick, if you like. Like you're using the fishing rod to flick, okay? So a little bit energy 
of upwards. The palm is diagonal, turned diagonal, the palms. So from here, we're going to hold the ball, palm to palm, hold the ball palm to palm. From the holding balloon position, checking if the elbows slightly down below your wrists, below the shoulder. Shoulders down, elbows down as you hold your balloon. Try not to lift the elbows up. That's it. When you're ready, we move on to the next part. Roll, almost imagine you roll the balloon, roll the ball, and use the bottom hand to lift. Lift up. Continue to lift. Continue to lift. The left palm will gently push forward. As you rotate and block upwards. Okay, this is the hand shape. Now follow me, I will do the other hand shape. Okay, from holding ball, uh, let's see if I can do the mirrored image this time. Okay, mirrored image. Now the mirrored image, my, this will be my left leg now, left hand. And no footwork, just the hands, okay? So one, hold your ball, palm to palm, two, roll the ball, turn, roll the ball, kind of circle, roll the ball, lift the bottom hand and block and push. The top hands after lifting continue to rotate, block away. The bottom hand will push forward. Okay. Here is our mirrored image. Of course, we do both sides. So we develop both sides of left and right brain and coordination. So it doesn't really matter if you are doing the opposite direction to me. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and we, we do both sides. Now I'm going to um, talk about the coordination now between the hand movement and the foot movement. Again, if you find the directions is um, uh, confusing, not to worry because this is just, we do, we do both. Now, I, to help you, or to make it easier, I will do the mirrored image this time facing the camera. Okay, so hand and foot now together. When you're ready, sink and step to the corner. One, bring the back foot up, hold the ball. I just come back a little bit, make sure you can see two step roll the ball roll and lift this is two three transfer weight continue to block and push to the other side one shift your weight back and two Transfer weight forward, hold your ball again. Three, step and circle the ball. Four, lock and push. Bring the back foot up, sliding the hands down. Okay, so if we break the posture to three, three parts, 
then there are some key moments you want to coordinate. One, from, from standing on one leg, whether it's mirrored image or the same side. One, you want to step and bring the back foot up, hold the ball. At two, you want to take a corner step at the same time. Roll the ball, roll the ball to be ready for block and push. Step and lift. Three, transfer weight, block and push. This hand and foot coordinate happen together to be able to deliver the final technique. Same to the other side. One, two, three. The idea for this movement or the intention is to neutralize an incoming push Partners coming in, pushing forward, and I neutralize. I gently follow, follow the incoming direction. As I follow, I already neutralized or changed that force into my advantage or no longer be a threat to me. As soon as I neutralize that my other hands will follow up to push back that is the technique if you like the application if you like and all the previous the one and two is to prepare is to prepare for this the contact to form to be formed and to deliver the final application. In your mind's eye, you are playing for real. So your intention is real. Even though this intention is um, visualization, you imagine, you visualize, you are reacting with your opponent. It's not a real person. However, the power of your visualization and mind active engagement plays a huge part and transformative influence onto your movements, the quality of your movements. So do imagine how your, your, what your posture is doing. That also helps to keep that string of the monkey mind to anchor into your body the present moment here and now okay now let's do one more run through of these movements and move on to the next i'm going to return to the correct direction now ready go you neutron one, two, three. Number two. One, two, three. Good. Bring the back foot up. Floating your hands down. Ah, well done so far. The next movement is called Hai Di Zhen, Needles at Sea Bottom. Again, I face the camera first. The cha changes of the foot and hands uh, we'll talk about. After the, the second Yun Yu Chuan Su, the footwork will change from bow stance corner facing, taking a half a step up, and then turn, 
turn back to straight and draw the other foot in, then pointing your toes. We have done, learned, or used this stance, Xu Bu, empty stance, because the body weight, very little supported by the front foot. It's solid onto the back foot. Okay, so this is the footwork. Direction, turn back to straight. The straight direction, if you were following my clock on the floor, should be 12 o'clock facing the back wall. Now we should be facing nine o'clock. Okay, 12, three, six, and nine. So it should be go straight to nine o'clock. For a temporary or illustration purpose, my nine o'clock is just gravitized to the camera so that you can see better. So let's try to look at the hands change. Now we already know the footwork, which is half a step is one, sitting back, shift your weight, and three, yeah, two, draw in, three, toe resting. This is the side view. The body shape will change slightly when we do the hands. Now let's have a look at the hands. When you were in the push, lock and push. Now the hands, hand change. This is not the mirrored image, I stress. Okay, when you turn to right, as you turn the body to your right, the both hands doing two separate things. The higher hand, this higher hand, will draw a curve will curve its way down, curve its way down. The downward pushing hand will circle in to your hips, to the hips, side of your hips, to continue to circle up, downward, upwards. And the top hand, as it from circle down in a curve from, sideways and downwards your jaw and lift your right hand up and then three your left hand will circle brush around the front and with your right hand we lift up jab jab using the fingers diagonal downwards forward and downwards jabbing down cha zhang in chinese we describe the technique as in cha cha zhang okay thrusting or jabbing diagonal downwards the circling hands is try to block away so here a little bit um you know can be a little bit busy with our arms with our arms so top hands will circle down like a follow an s shape s shape okay in tai chi we like movement that draw in circles reflecting the neutralizing you know all the energies we try to neutralize will never go head on when the principle of tai chi is about neutralizing changing transforming okay so we follow a curve the to prepare the other hands the other hands will circle inward downwards upwards and jabbing whatever circles that we are we're doing with the hands 
the ultimate aim is to to neutralize and clearly create a space so, so that you can produce a counter attack okay so you're receiving a kick or push you always neutralize you follow and react to it and creating a space for you to return if your opponents imaginary opponents interact with you you must interact back but using the flow the softness of the um, tai chi principle at least that is the aim of our form practice okay that is one of the pillar that guiding principles of tai chi it's about you know neutralizing transforming transform the energy and for the li and strength neutralize and return how when we say softness we don't mean softness as like a noodle like no strength <laughs> okay we don't mean softness with no subsidence we only mean softness as opposed to the brutal force the muscle fiber the brutal force purely based on the strength and speed okay it's the speed of your punch the speed of your block it's the only or predominantly deciding fact as a deciding factor so what that's in the context of the brutal force and muscle fiber and speed and power we use tai chi as we describe tai chi as soft however soft is not doesn't mean um feeble okay like collapsing energy it's a there is an underlying strength there's an underlying energy like the waves of the ocean on the surface of it water is the softest thing but when they move with energy water can be the hardest force destroy everything on the way so there must be an underlying energy when we practice tai chi so the energy is not um it's not outwardly like fast and steep but there must be an underlying energy in your practice the energy we call in jargon is peng peng is an expanding resilience growth of energy within the movements every movement we should reach to a state of expansion with strong resilient wrapped or presented in the softness externally but underneath of that softness approach there is strength with it okay let's try to talk about the um coordination between the two two hands and foot two parts of course this coordination is led by our waist and everything starts from here however when we learn step by step we learn from the upper body and lower body it's a quicker way to understand but the essence when we when we put together is coming from the center good now i'm going to do the mirrored image this time so starting to lead you okay now the coordination half a step up one half a step up two as you sit back we circle circle neutralize and prepare the other hands two draw the front foot in three 
jabbing, circle and jab. Empty stance all at the same time. Hand, waist, foot, eyes and body. When you're jabbing forward, your body needs to give the intention. So to slightly lean forward. This lean forward does not mean collapsing of the back. This is collapse. So we carry on with the, the straight in the torso, but draw the hip crease in. Pull the hip crease in, sit and fold from here and leaning forward with a straight back. Okay, good. Ah, this is the coordination. We break it down to three sm small parts. Let's do it once more for the mirrored image before we move on. Step up is one, turn, two, draw the front foot in, three, okay, I hope that speed, what you can follow, not too fast. It does take practice um, if you haven't quite got it or feel comfortable with it. It does take lots of practice, like all arts in Chinese culture, whether you learn music, Chinese, or even Western music, um, playing piano or violin, Chinese art calligraphy, painting, music, or even, you know, like sports, any sports, it takes time to practice to get better. I will leave that part of the job to your capable hands at home. Now let's do talk about the last movement for today. The last movement is Shan Tong Bei, flash through the back flash through the back. As in the, in the forms, when we have finished needles at sea bottom, we'll come up, one, step, okay. So this is how it appears in the form. We break this movement down to two counts. We use one and two, two counts. And let's have a look of the changes in the footwork. Again, my nine o'clock will now shift towards the camera just for you to see clearly. Now, if I don't do the mirrored image, we should have the left foot, my left foot, right hand, opposite hand to the foot to front. Okay, raise the hands, hold the hands up, draw the front foot in, step. And pull back, push forward. Step in. The changes in the foot. Let's have a look from empty stance. This is the empty stance. Or the mirrored image, I swap over, okay. Draw the foot back. And step out again. This time, when we step out, we don't need like hip width too wide. This is suitable. The hip width is suitable for the opposite connections to the foot and hands, opposite connection. The flash through the back is not opposite connection and therefore it's 
corresponding side, corresponding side of hand and foot in front. For this type of movement, we don't need shoulder width. We need a slight narrower space, narrower footwork. So we step forward, look, the front foot is just a little gap to the back heel. Ready? Let's do it again. One step, two, transfer weight again, lengthening the tailbone, sitting on the bar stool and roll forward. Okay, so this is what we have a special term called shun gong bu, meaning the corresponding side of the hand and foot will, will come forward, will be in front. This type of bow stance we call shun gong bu. When we have the opposite hand to foot in front to coordinate, for example, yun yu chuan suo or lo xi ao bu, brush knee to step. When we have the opposite hand to the foot, we call this type of coordination ao gong bu. Ao gong bu means the opposite. Okay? A little bit special term for you. So this is the footwork change. Now let's have a look of the hand change. Doing the mirrored image, first one hand change from the jabbing, from the fingers diagonally forward and downwards, pull, pull up, over diagonally above your temple, okay? One, both hands together, both hands together. Doesn't have to be skin to skin touch, but they are together. The fingers supporting the wrists by the heel of the palm. So drawing up from here, one, two, from here, we open, 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 push forward, push forward, and pull back. Okay, so one, two. Is the changes of the hands. Again, what are we doing? We're neutralizing, creating a contact, neutralizing by a full incoming force. We rotate and gently guide it, guide it away from our head, chest, and the targeted area. Gently guide away so it does no longer pose a threat to us. So I'm neutralizing away and then creating at the same time, creating a space for my hands to push into, okay? So this is the whole, everything you can see now is about preparation or assess the situation and then for preparation for our, our safety or reacting as a self-defense and then return counter attack. Okay, so let's try to um, put this hand and foot together as coordination, okay? I'm doing the mirrored image again, just to help those um, based in learning from home. One, draw the front foot in, okay? Hands together. Step out. Two, push and pull. Pull back, push forward. When you finish push forward, check if your hands, pushing hands, and your knee, and your toe, whether they are all 
in the same direction. Your middle finger in line with your nose. So your eyes are softly gazing through your fingertips. Elbows down, shoulders down, and they're all in aligned forward. Back hand, pull back, diagonally above your temple. Mm -hmm. From the side view, one, two, look, push forward, pull back. Yeah, when you transfer your body weight forward, push and pull. Okay, there are these usually uh, in a one class space. I, te I don't teach too many movements um, because there's a vast amount of information to, to take in, to digest. And um, it takes time, as I said before. Also, less is more sometimes where I really like this phrase in English. Um, by learning too many, our brain is saturated, can be saturated, and overload with information. So focusing on a smaller number of movements, but go deeper, sometimes will give us time to digest, to think it over, and most importantly, to experience those feelings, the principles, and how they instilled or how they embodied in the movement, it's worth more for benefits for you to get out. Okay, uh, before we run out of time today, I would like to invite you just to run through these three movements as our final practice. Are you ready? Okay. Ready? Yu Ni Chuan Su. One. Two. Three. Number two. Two. Three. Hai Di Jun, half a step up, one, circle, block, two, draw the foot in, three, jump, Shantong Bei, one, draw the foot in, two, step, push and pull. Taking the back foot up. Step in, feet together. Okay, well done. I hope today's lesson has brought you some useful tips and insight helping you to improve those who have learned the pattern, the 24 step, to improve on your practice. And if you're new to this sequence, the 24 step, then I hope it helps you to start giving you a, a starting point. It does take a little while to get a good grip with it, but with your regular practice, you should be. And with, if you have a teacher regular class to go to, you will find your progress a lot faster, a lot sooner. Good. That's all we have time for, for this public lecture. Um, I don't, I'm sorry we don't have time to do question and answers today. 
I'm, as I'm recording uh, this session, uh, I will be teaching in Manchester to a conference, of TCM conference, um, by the time you're watching this. I look forward to that and sharing our common ground, the TCM practitioners, um, all experts, all top you know, experts in the field of TCM uh, in, in UK and many travel from Europe to be here. So I look forward to share um, our common ground and how we use the philosophy and the principles in different areas, different skill sets, but achieving the same aim to help people to maintain health and well-being. Okay, that's all for today. Let me say goodbye for now. Okay, do our Tai Chi and martial arts salutes. Thank you everyone for watching.